All right, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Sendemia system mod, which is being made by user Baktiba. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a lovely new ringed world with a few moons for you to explore. And I mean, come on, who doesn't love that? So let's uh, jump into the tracking station and have a look at what we do get. And uh, to start, let's a zoom out as per usual to the entire solar system view and adjust past Elu. And by just, I mean really, really far past Elu, we have our new little system of Sendemia, which not only is way out there, but also does have quite an interesting orbital path with a bit of inclination to it, which makes it a bit more difficult to get to, but, uh, and, you know, a fun challenge in that regard. And if we go over there, that interesting inclination also seems to carry over to the various moons of this system. As you can see here, we have our lovely little planet in the middle there, and three different moons at a various aqua orbits in a variety of different inclinations. There is nothing normal about this little system, and it's great. It will, of course, make it more difficult to get to and explore, but hey, that's where the challenge and fun is in the whole thing. So let's take a look, of course, first at, well, the planet of Sentemia, which is fairly large at 550 kilometers for its radius. It does have a gravity of 1.12 Gs. It has no atmosphere present on this terrestrial world, but I mean, look at the colors. It is a very, very colorful planet, which I really like. You know, after looking at the same old, same old planets we've seen in many packs in the past, it's kind of interesting to see one that Kind of reminds me of cotton candy or something along those lines. And plus, again, it's ringed. Though the rings do seem a bit large for this particularly... But it's actually not a small planet, 550 kilometers. But, you know, I don't know. There's just something about the rings seems far larger than they should be. But I still love it because not only is it a ringed world, and I love those things... But the color on it is quite nice as well. I really do love the reds and pinks there. Very cool to see that interesting color change. Now, after this one, we'll uh, visit the first of the moons. And I think my favorite of the moons, and that, of course, is... Magnon. And this one, a fair bit smaller, at uh, 136 kilometers in its radius, with a gravity of 0.01 Gs. And again, on this one, no atmosphere present. But again, it's a very colorful, gorgeous world, with a lot of bumpy terrain on this, making it a more interesting place to land on. And I think all in all, quite cool. And it has a very unusual orbit for this little system, as you can see, a very elongated and ovular rather than circular there, and again, a fun inclination that actually does take it sort of basically creating a ring within a ring, and I I very much like that. It's kind of cool. Now, after that, the uh, next and second moon, which is just right over there, as you can see it, because their paths do get quite close, we have... BP, which is a lot larger than the last moon at 380 kilometers in size with a lot more gravity at 0.7 Gs. But once again, we have no atmosphere present. And this is a much craggier looking world here, or well, rather moon, with a bit more subdued of colors compared to the last two celestial bodies, but still an interesting sort of texturing on it. I do enjoy it. And with the very bumpy terrain, it should make for a fun challenge for any landing, which is always good to have. And that leads us to the final of the moons. And I gotta be honest, the one problem I have with this mod. We'll get to that in a moment, though. But first, let's talk about its stats with, of course, the moon of Abagotia? I probably haven't pronounced that even slightly right, but it's a very tiny little captured asteroid with 7 kilometers in radius, a gravity of 0.0042 Gs, and like with every planet and moon in this little system, no gravity whatsoever. And on the image you guys are seeing right now, it looks like a normal spheroidal sort of uh, celestial body. But if I bring you back to the tracking station here, um... 
it seems to be meant to actually be an irregularly shaped asteroid. I don't know what's gone on with that. I've tried reinstalling and re-downloading this mod a couple of times, even looked at the files, and for the life of me can't figure out why in the tracking station, it's a, you know, an irregularly shaped asteroid, which looks cool, I like it. But when you actually get out to it in the game, it's a sphere. I find that weird. If it was properly shaped like this, I would actually be perfectly okay with it because of that oddity there, you know, knocked down a few points. But overall, I still really do love this little system. Not only is it a fun, far off planet with a freaking ring and loads of great colors, that is, I think, a fun challenge for anyone to go and explore. But I love the various inclinations of all these bodies and the view, the view from Magnon is spectacular. Spectacular! At the right angle, you can see these three celestial bodies all together, and it is just gorgeous. I really do like it. In fact, that is, of course, why we do have our usual survey satellite over there, because if we jump back into, or actually just just to space, you can see the amazing views. We got Ascendemia over there with its just beautiful, colorful planet, the gigantic red and pink rings. And just over there, we've got green little Beppy. Weird name, but I love it. It's just a great little experience. I do love the views from these places. It's a bit different of a planet pack than we've seen in a while. Less about sort of normal looking worlds and just an interesting place to go and visit. So if you'd like to have a look at this for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, uh, you can look at the link in the description as per usual. And actually, before we do actually end here, I said actually twice there, that's weird, but I should mention as per usual with these planet packs, it is currently only in 1.7.3. At this time, there is still not a stable release of Copernicus in 1.8, and you do, of course, require Copernicus. So this is still going to be lagging behind the main game a little bit, but for me, it's still worth it to go and explore fun new worlds. So again, if you'd like to check it out for yourself, which I'd recommend, link in the description as per usual, but that's going to be it for today, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.